The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada looks online at digikey.com and finds... Parts. The parts. That you can buy. (laughs) And we call that the Great Search. What is this week's Great Search Lady Ada. Okay, so this week's great search is is kind of you know it's it's a two in one. So one, um, Pololu, which is a friend company uh, there in Nevada, they also do open source hardware and electronics, and they did a massive post about silicon shortages and yeah. uh, lead times, and it's a you know it's a great article, so go check it out on uh, Pololu.com. Yeah. And one of the things that they showed is like their stock levels for some chips, including MOSFETs. Um, yeah, so I just want to, I want to promote them. Also, you know, please support Pololu. Um, their stuff is yeah, awesome. Yeah, so every holiday season and, and every time it, they have um, a sale, too. Um, we promote them. And, yeah. uh, you know, I'll say this to our, you know, live viewers and everything. I, I really hope the maker companies and the electronic companies um, this holiday season maybe get together and cross-promote each other because, like, Adafruit doesn't have every single thing. And every year... We um, post all the sales to other sites and everything. Um, Pololu and Adafruit always do that together, and we try yes, to uh, put the spotlight on Pololu. But, you know, there's this thing that happened. Like, we all used to be a community, and it was smaller when we first started doing open source hardware together, like, 15 years ago. And now everyone's a competitor, and, like, knives are out, and, like, there's people who don't even talk to each other anymore. I think given that we've survived the pandemic, and not everyone did, but given that, like, we're here now, some of us did, um, maybe it's a good reset. So, anyways, this is part of the great search is finding the goodness in each other. Yes. In addition to this part, back Sometimes to the data. You're searching for for another good company. So their stuff is available on digikey.com as yeah. well. So do, you can purchase through them. Um, uh, but please support Polo. They do awesome robotic stuff. But I, I really liked they they posted some really good information about their part shortages and how they're struggling. And um, they mentioned that even MOSFETs are hard to get. Um, yeah, it's like the silicon shortage. Like I, I know that. Um, there was a blog post by by Playdate by Panic, and they were talking about how their STM32 F7 chip or H7 chip, whichever it is, um, it's like they got a lead time of two years. And I saw another company say, you know, we have an FPGA and it's some crowdfunding project, and they're like, our FPGA is delayed for also for like a year or two. Um, but you know, those and those are like the things you're popular because you're like you hear about these chips and sensors being used in automotive. But we're seeing this too. Even even MOSFETs, like even the most like jelly bean of parts, are getting hard to get. Or you order them and you're not getting them. And yeah. um, I always found that a little bit weird because I'm like, you you know, if you make a, um, you know, if you if you make a, a silicon wafer with MOSFETs on it, I mean, you're gonna get like like thou- hundreds of thousands of them per wafer. I mean, they're they're very simple. They're easy to fab. Um, but it could be that that process is booked up. So, um, one of the things that we actually were this, this week, I had to go and find an alternative for is, um, for our prop maker Featherwing, it's out of stock because we, we actually couldn't get, um, there's not a lot on here, but we couldn't get the MOSFET that's used, uh, with turning on the RGB LED. So this prop maker wing, um, part of it. And, you know, of course, when I designed this, I was like, what's the three end channel MOSFETs? What's the big deal? How could they ever not be available? Um, but we have a little RGB LED driver and you can see this uh, ultra high power LED. A lot of people who make, uh, you know, sabers or props, they have a very bright LED. Um, we just did a, a prop with it um, for Halloween. Then when Pedro did and they used an LED and they said it compared to a NeoPixel, actually kind of the point source created a nice effect. But to drive these LEDs, you actually have to use a very powerful N-channel MOSFET um, with a good power supply. Because these, these LEDs can, can be three watts. Um, they can be an amp per channel um, or even more, maybe you know amp and a half for the, uh, the red LED. So it's, it's a sizable amount of current. Um, so you want to drive it well. So here is um, the circuit design we, we had for the... Um, the uh, the prop feather wing, so you see there's a end channel FET and there's a, a light pull down red green blue, um, very small little chokers just just to keep it from you know running away uh, thermally, um, and we spec the the DMG thirty four o six. So let's go to DigiKey and this is the part I can't get, but let's look at this specs, DMG thirty four o six. So there's two versions available here, but I think it's just uh, which the real size. It's how many is per real. Um, and yeah, one of the tricks I've done is, you know, I, I like to type in, you know, just a number here. If you're not getting a thing that pops up that tells you, like, the 
dates. It doesn't mean they're not going to get them, but it's kind of like it fills me with an ease. You know what I mean? It's like, what mm. you know? What do you mean you don't even know when you're going to get the next reel in? Um, so that's when I think we even booked some and we haven't gotten them yet, but we, we ran out. And so we have to find an alternative. Um, so, you know, when you're doing this, uh, use the project product attributes to select an alternative. Um, so we're going to guess it's going to be a single MOSFET. Um, it's going to be an end channel. Now, I'm not going to click active. This is a, a secret because I did it first and I, I didn't find a good alt. And then I was like, well, what if I click non-active and, and you'll see something came up. Um, I want a MOSFET. Now, for the drain to source voltage and the current and the dry voltage and the RDS on and the VGS, again, I don't need it to be that precise number. I just need it to be around that number. So I'm not going to check those off. Instead, I'm going to then filter by groups because it's like I just need 50 milliohm about or less, right? And less is better. So I can always select anything under that amount. Um, however, I do want it to be a SOT233. And I want to be, of course, pick and place compatible. I want to use the same you know, package and PCB because I've already got that designed. Um, okay, great. So we'll view so much. So 345 available. Now, even though I don't care about active, I do want it to be in stock. And that basically brings it down to 50. So, you know, there's not as many of these um, in stock, not surprising. Okay, so next up. Um, so the most important is is that continuous current drain. Now again, I mentioned you know the 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 LEDs. People can connect three to nine watt LEDs. Um, so I want to be able to to draw. You know, it it was like three point six amps. I want to have something at least as good. So I'm going to select three point four amps, which is a little bit less, but still you know well within reason um, or above. And that gets me to sixteen options. Um, and then. Uh, the next thing is the RDS on. Um, so I do want to have the, the resistance be low. I mean, I, I really need to make sure if the, the thing that's going to um, be challenging is if I have to dissipate a lot of heat uh, through this um, uh, transistor. So I want to reduce the RDS on because it's, it's not really heat sunk and it's driving a lot of current. Um, so I had 50 milliohms before, and I'll basically select you know, 58 or under. So I'll give myself a little bit of a, a little bit more option, but still. Um, for the VGS on, I think, oh, let me see what it was. MG. I think it was 1.7. Sorry, the VGS is two. Um, I will say that I'm driving it from 3.3 volt logic, so I'm actually not concerned. Um, nothing, you know, I, I, that's the one thing I'm really not too worried about. The, the VGS, everything here is under 3.3. Um, so that's good. So let's see what we've got for options. So um, there are actually a couple options available, which is always a really good feeling. Um, let's see if there's any other. The VGS Max I don't care about, and the... Uh, gate charge I don't care about um, so these are all these are all pretty good and then when I sorted from oh, sorted down from stock I actually got um, a lot of good options here so uh, looks like you know one thing that I thought was interesting is that there is a DMG 3402 so this is a um, you know like a sister product to the 3406 and this one actually just has a slightly higher current. So it's actually a slight improvement, um, and it has a lower VGS. So this would be a really good option. And there's also the AO3406. And again, I always kind of like it when there's like a competing company that makes a chip with the same subpart number because it's like they're going to match the specs pretty well. Like I'm, not, I'm like, okay, clearly this was meant to be a drop-in replacement. Even though it's not guaranteed, even though you should check the data sheet, it's kind of nice, right? So um, it's kind of like we you know when you when you go to the grocery store and they're like, oh, they don't have Dr. Pepper, but they have like Mr. Pib, and you're like, well, it's like a Mr. Doctor, PhD, whatever. Yeah. It's close. Um, so the both all of these are quite fine, but um, you know these three I would are, are going to say are the the top picks because they have, you know, I need a lot. They have four, over forty thousand in stock. Um, the DMG thirty four hundred two I would probably actually 
want to test it just to make sure it worked. Um, but uh, for drop-in replacementness, the AO3406 is, is another really good option. And what's interesting is that this was a NRND, but they have 40,000 stock. And again, I don't really care. I just want, I just have to get through the next couple months until that order that I placed for the DMG3406 comes in. So there's definitely going to be a lot of like, you know, pick, pick around, find the right component um, to match. But for, you know, MOSFETs, when you spec them, I'll say it's, it's tricky because there's so many specifications and some of them matter and some of them don't. Like because this isn't driving, you know, anything high speed, I don't worry about the gate capacitance so much, um, but that might matter to you. And again, like the voltage, the gate threshold doesn't matter. Um, and I know the DMG3406 has worked really well. So even though there's a chip that has slightly better specs, I'm actually probably going to be safe and stick with these specs just so I don't get surprised by something um even if even if on paper something looks better i've learned like do try to stick to the thing that's closest to what you've got and then change change over specifications if you need to and that's a great search